Hi everyone, I'm Hoop Hildenbrand. Thanks for tuning into my channel, Hoop Hildenbrand Guitar Academia. Today we have lesson six of the complete beginners course, really starting from zero. And this lesson six is also lesson three of rhythmic notation. So let's get right in into the endless ocean of music. <music> Each lesson there is a PDF file you can download by clicking down in the um, you find the link down in the description below and especially for for this lesson like the previous two lessons we we, we have like one PDF file we are really referring here as I said and um, you should you should download it and print it out and keep it um, in front of you so that you really can can follow what we are talking about here. Okay, thank you. All right, this will be a quite tough lesson. I have to prepare you, and I think um, a lot of you will just maybe like watching this, this, this video a couple of times to really grasp it. But on the other hand, it, it is really a rewarding thing if you understand what we are talking about. Uh, if you really understand music notation, how it works. And we really, um, really building here the, the, the ground, the basis for this. And when you when you understand today's today's lesson you you will never have to worry again about music notation i think of course later on we we come also with the, with the notes now we are um, only busy with the rhythm but the notes are are also i mean are are easy in a way maybe it, I think that just these, these symbols, these rhythmical symbols and the, the rhythmical notation, that can be quite a challenge for, for, for most uh, beginners, actually. Okay, so let's start. As, as, a, um, as one general, very important concept is the concept of, of a kind of a framework. So a framework, in, in our case, is just a length of time. So time, time is mostly indicated by a line. Going, here's the start, here's the end. So it goes like, if we count our 2-4 bar, and please repeat the, the um, lessons um, four and five, especially five, um, to be prepared for this lesson, because otherwise it will be, I think, quite difficult. But you can try. Um, but better take it easy and just stop this lesson now and go to lesson four, then lesson five, and then to this lesson. Okay, anyway, I hope you are all with me now. So I, I show you what, what I mean. We have this uh, one, one and two and. Remember, we count with our foot. One and two and. One and two and. We can, we can, we can make this movement with the hand. One and two and. One and two and. So one and two and one. So we have a certain, certain distance which equals our measure, our two four measure. Makes this clear for yourself. This this is a distance. This is a, a, a space, a, a space in, in, in time. What we are doing, if we say, okay, this is a two four bar, we have one and two and one and two and we actually divide this distance into four equal parts. So this is the whole distance. Then we can have the half distance. So we have one half, one half. So one and two and. 
and we divide also these, these distances into two parts. We have 1 and 2 and. Makes this clear for yourself. It's like a, a shelf which has uh, four, four equal places where you can put something on it. You have one and two and. One and two and. One and two and. So one is one distance, and is one distance, two is one distance, and and is one distance again. So you have four equal distances. And these four equal distances, they are called eighth notes because our basic pulse is quaternals. One, two. These are quaternals. Are two quaternals. So just imagine this cake example. We have the half cake and we divide it into two parts. So we have two quarters. And if we divide it again, we have four eighths, eighth notes. This is something you, you always have to, you have to imagine, you have to visualize. Because now all these different symbols which are coming, they have a certain length. They are symbols which, which equal two of these four distances. And you already know these, these uh, symbols. They are actually just quarter notes, so a filled note head and a stem. So one and, this is a quarter note, one and, this was a quarter note, and two and is another quarter note. So this quarter note equals two eighth notes, so two spaces, two distances of this, these four, four distances in the, in the measure. This should make, this should, if you understand this, this should make the, the rest of the course, I mean, the rest of this lesson, very clear. Okay, so now let's go to our PDF file, page 6, and um, you see these uh, this, this numbers on the, on the left. This is referring to page 5, and this was our, um, also our lesson 5, where we already um, played all these rhythms and now we are just talking about how they are notated with um, notation symbols. So always put in front your 2-4, two 2-4, four. Two, four, two quarter notes. This is your basic pulse, two quarter notes. So one, two, one, two. This is a basic uh, framework for the whole thing. So rhythm number six, we don't go them through them uh, chronologically. We uh, we just go move uh, go through them by difficulty. So the first is the least difficult, and so on. And we are introducing more and more symbols here as we progress. So the first is number six, and number six is just going like one and two and one. I just play actually quarter notes. One measure is just filled with two quarter notes. So I write two quarter notes and that that I have done here on this PDF file. So the next the next rhythm the next rhythm is going like this. One and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and so there's actually nothing happening on the one end but I play on the two I play a quarter note two and is sound and I strike the note on the two so I have two and this is sound but one and no sound for no sound or silence we have Instead of notes, we have other symbols. These are called rests. And 
we have for every note, for a quarter note, for a half note, for a whole note, remember we talked about this in the, in the um, first rhythm lesson, lesson number uh, four. For all these notes, we also have a rest. So we also have a, in, we have a quarter note, we, we have a quarter note, but the same length of a quarter note, we can have a quarter note rest. Quarter note equal silence. And that's what we have there. One and we don't have any note. We have a silence in the length of a quarter note. So we have a quarter note rest. And on this page, um, you see how it's how it's how, how you, you you can draw this quarter note. It's a bit tricky to draw it, but um, Maybe I come to this in a later lesson, how to actually draw these symbols, because this is also quite, uh, quite, quite cool if you can, can have a good, good, uh, good handwriting. And some, some symbols actually, they, it's good to have some help how you, where you start and how you move and, and so on. But anyway, we, we just talk about um, how to read the symbols, not to write them. Okay, so we have a quarter note rest and a quarter note. One and two and one and two and... And as you see, for the rest, I, I, um, I move my hand against the string that it's really silence. I didn't really do this in the, in the um, lesson five, but for, for this lesson I want to really make clear that you hear it, that it's, there is no sound. So it's one and... Two and one and two and one and two and one and two and So when you play these examples, try it yourself to just come very close. And this is a, this is a small movement actually. Um, <clears throat> one and two and one and two and one and two and. You can also do this with the left hand. One and two and one and two. And this may be a bit easier. Both ways are possible and they are frequently done. Okay, we go to number 12. Number 12 is a, um, is a note we already had in, in lesson four. It's a half note. And when we talked about this, we talked about this in Renaissance music and we said a half note is the double speed of a whole note. Now we think it a bit reverse because now we have the quarter note, quarter notes as a basic pulse. So we have the half notes and the half notes, one half note equals two quarter notes. So a, a half note, this note has a note head which is not filled and a stem, is actually the note which um, fills the whole two four measure. So if we want to have on, on one starting one note going through the whole measure like one and two and one and two and one and two and then we should use a half note there. We should play a half note. So a half note equals two quarter notes or we can also say from our uh, framework, a half note equals four, or did I say four quarter notes? No, I mean uh, one half note equals two quarter notes. Sorry if I said it wrong. And But we can also say a uh, half note equals four eighths notes. That's the same thing. Remember the cake. Half, two quarters, eight eighths. All right, we can also notate this, uh, this rhythm differently. I mean, we can also, actually we can also play it differently because it's not, not only a different notation, it's also a different sound. We can reverse the, the order of, um, of the symbols of number 14. So in 12, we can also have a, a quarter note and a quarter note rest. So we, we, we have to be uh, really precise with dampen the string, stopping the string to vibrate exactly on two. So we say one and two and one and two and one and two. And. So we have a quarter note 
sound and we have a quarter note rest silence sound silence sound silence remember our framework we the first half is sound the second half is silence quarter note quarter note rest okay so we go to the next step and we already played it many times in lesson lesson five so it should be not 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 so difficult to understand it what we are doing now we 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 play on every eighth notes so this this division we divide this two four bar into four parts as we as we did before and we play every every part of them so we say one and two and one and two and one and two and so we have sound 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 we have no rest at all it's always sound and we have four eighth notes after each other so one and two and one and two and one and two and and eighth notes they have uh, different appearances you can draw eight single eighth notes they have a flag and you see this also down um, on the bottom of the of page six they have uh, flags in the last example you see this you can also put the flags to flags together to form beams so these beams are these um, horizontal thick horizontal lines which connects um, actually it connects notes which which look exactly like quarter notes but they have beams so they are eighth notes and you can you can um, you can uh, connect two eighth notes you can connect four eighth notes together or you can just have single eighth notes with flags and all these three examples on the page they all mean exactly the same thing there is no difference in sound it's just there are some some things in, in vocal music we don't have to care about this now um, we play it always in the same way whether it's a beam connecting two notes or four notes or just flags it's always the same thing it's always eighth note 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 one and two and one and two so we can have a beam and another beam 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 or one long beam one one beam or we can have a flag 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 it's just it's just how it's written just visual it's, it's a visual uh, it, it looks different and that's actually mostly why why we we write it different to to make it really clear um, the idea or the structure or actually when we when we beam together two notes so one and two and then um, we see the quarter notes going on so we see we see this a division into into two parts of the whole framework of the two four bar. We see one end and we see two end. So visually, it's it's very clear what what what's going on. Eighth note, eighth note, eighth note, eighth note. First comes with a foot. Second off. Second on. Uh, up. We play dara dara. Remember lesson five. We play dara and then we play another dara on the two. So. That's quite quite logic logically to, to, to write it like this. All right, we go on with page seven, and page seven we have um, rhythms three, two, and eight, and they don't bring us any new symbol. So by now you 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 should actually um, figure out this this whole thing how how they are written by yourself. In the number three, three you have a um, quarter note and two eighth notes. In the first example, the two eighth notes are beamed; they have a beam, and in the second example, they have flags. And remember, it's it's the same thing. It's just the same thing. The rhythm is going like um, one and two and one and two and da da ra da da ra. In both cases, it's it's not a 
not a difference. And the same, vice versa, actually. We start with two eighth notes and then comes a quarter note. The first eighth notes in the first example are beamed and in the second example they have flex. So rhythm number two, it's also nothing new, actually. It's just going like one and two and one and two and one and two. All right, number eight, number eight, we just, we have a quarter note rest on one end. So the first half of the two, four measure is silence. And then we have two eighth notes. And in the first example, they are beamed. In the second example, they have just flags. Same thing. To be really sure, um, you have to be really sure if you play this uh, correctly, that there is really silence on one end. And one and on one end there must be silence so you have to dampen the string stop them from vibrating so one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and and so on all right now we come to a new symbol and the the new symbol is a um, is an eighth note rest An eighth note rest, it's the same principle as a quarter note rest. Every note, as I said, every um, note, like a quarter note and also an eighth note, they have also equ an equal, equal length instead of a note, instead of sound, they have a rest. So an eighth note rest just has the same length as an eighth note, but instead of meaning sound, it means silence. And number five is a very good example. And you, you see these, these are three different ways how to write it. Again, with beams or with flags. I think by now, maybe the, the last is, is, is newer. You can also beam like three eighth notes together. And in this case, you have the first eighth note, you have an eighth note rest. So the way you should play it is one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and. Is it clear? So you have an eighth note rest and then an eighth note, an eighth note, and an eighth note. And the eighth note rest is exactly the same length than the eighth note after this and the eighth note after this and the eighth note after this. So remember, you have this framework one bar, two, four bar. You, you divide this into two quarter notes, into four eighth notes, and the first division, the first space is a rest, the second space is a note, the third space is a note, and the, the fourth space is a note again. So, if you compare, um, if you compare um, rhythm number five, with rhythm, num rhythm number one, you, you, I think it's very clear because the, 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 the difference is just that the first eighth note gets an eighth note rest. So this is a, a kind of a symbol you use them, indicating a new sim symbol in this case here, um, indicating an eighth note rest. Number 10. Number 10 is again an eighth note rest, an eighth note on the one end, and on the two we have a quarter note sounding the rest of the measure. So we have one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and. I hope this is clear. Number seven, the first example of number seven is two eighth note notes and then a quarter note rest so it's one and two and one and two and one and two and now i think this is clear but what happens if we want to have the second note hold longer the rest of the measure like this one and two and one and two and one and there is no rest, no silence part at all. The second note, the one and, 
It's just ringing on till the end of the measure. Till in the next measure, the one is coming again. And this we can, we can write um, with a tie. A tie, as a word, indicates it ties two tones together. So two notes are tied together. So the first, first note is just hold. And you don't play the second note, which is tied to the first note. You don't play it. You hold the first note. And that first note gets is, 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 sound, is, sound, is sounding as just one long note. So it's like a, the, the, the first and the second note, it's, it's uh, added together to form one longer note. And this tie is a, is a very, very frequent uh, symbol, which happens very often in music notation. So again, I play this for you. One and two and one and two and one and two. If the if you put the tie away, it would sound like one and two and one and two and. But the tie means don't strike the second note. Don't strike the quarter note. This is tied to the note before to the one end. One and two and sorry. One and two and one and. Number nine, we have also um, a possibility, um, also a way um, of notating it with a tie and another way without a tie. And I'm, I'm sure that you know by now, in the first example, we have sound all the time. And in the second example of number nine, we have put in a, a, a bit of a silence. This silence comes on the two and it's just the length of an eighth note. So I play you the, uh, the first example and the second example and you, I think you're, you're, you should be clear what's, what's, what does it mean here. So the first example and I repeat it several times. One and two and one and two and one and two and so no rest, all sound. One and two and one example one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and it's quite a different um, um, musical uh, musical musical expression you reach by one time have this little piece of rest of silence and the other example where you don't have it listen to it it's it's a difference it's quite a difference it's not just a rest you know silence is something that what can give the note its, its meaning actually there's a there's a very uh, nice uh, Sing Mick Goodrick, one of my teachers, uh, wrote in his book Advancing Guitarist, a very great book. And um, he writes, silence is, oh no, notes are clever ways to connect one silence with the next. So, of course, both are important, the notes and the silence, but as we are tending more to focus and more see the notes and not the silence, it's quite interesting to, to concentrate more, to see more actually the, the, the silence. It's like seeing the, the shadow of, of, of something and not the object itself. So you, you, yeah, you, uh, you can shift your, uh, your um, attention. Okay, um, so I play you this, uh, these different versions, um, nine from uh, rhythm nine, so the, to, to just give you this, this uh, to make this, uh, this uh, 
it's clear that we have a silence and without silence it sounds different. So one and two. Number 13, we have an eighth note rest, an eighth note in the first example tied to a quarter note. So we fill the whole measure, but only the first eighth note is silence. So we have one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and. In the second example, same strike, but we have a quarter note rest instead of a quarter note tied to the eighth, eighth note. And a quarter note rest means silence. So there's a lot of silence in this, um, in this uh, rhythm, in this way of notating it. So we have just sound on the one end, on the upstroke. It sounds like this. One and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and okay i hope this is clear please leave leave uh, leave some some comments if you have really problems or um also if i'm maybe the first who may, made it clear for you because this is a response i uh, uh very frequently uh get when i have uh, students which had like uh, just normal musical training in, in the uh, uh, general education uh, schools, and they had uh, they had also notation and all this stuff and uh, theory, and but they never really understood it. So uh, I would be really happy if you if you uh, understand the things now, and I can help you with this. Okay, uh, number fifteen is uh, we have. A quarter note rest, we have an eighth note rest, and at the end of the measure, in the last portion, the last distance of the four distances of the framework, we have an eighth note. So we have just a bit of sound at the end. So we have one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two. So we have to make sure that our one is already silence. So we dampen the string exactly when the one is coming. So one and two and one and two and one and two and one. All right. Number four. Okay, number four. It looks very much, the first example, it looks very much like uh, number one, actually, on page six, down on page six, we have number one, um, the first example. Um, and the first example of number four, there's just a, a tie added. But this tie gives the whole rhythm, the whole thing, a very different, um, a different feel, a different impression. Um, so we have, we don't have the, we don't strike the two, but we let the one end ring into the two. So I played for you, so you see, one and two and one and two and one and two. So I say two, but I don't play on two. It's one long note on the one end, tied over, you say, it's tied over to the two. So. One and two and one and two and, and there is no rest, no silence at all. Silence uh, is um, is put in in the second example of number four, rhythm four, um, on the two. We have an eighth note rest on the two, and all the other notes are eighth notes. We had we have two beamed eighth notes and we have one single eighth notes which can't be beamed if it's a single eighth note, so it sh uh, should have a flag. Beam, you can only use a beam to connect eighth notes. And the example, uh, the example sounds like this. One and two and one and two and one and two and it's a quite nice 
Rhythm. One, one, two, and one, and two, and one, and two, and one, and two, and one, and two. Instead of the first example, where there's no rest, where there's a tie. One, and two, and one, and two, and one, and we have one, and two, and one, and two. So here also the rest gives the whole uh, thing a, a completely, completely different meaning, you could say. Okay, number 11 brings nothing new, just a different combination. We have an eighth note rest, we have an eighth note tied over to an eighth note, beamed together with another eighth note. So we have one and two and one and two and two. So it's similar, very similar to example number four, rhythm number four. Um, also, the second example of number 11 equals, in a way, the second example of number 4. Just the first eighth note is replaced by an eighth note rest, by silence. So, 11 again, the first example. 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and... Second example with a rest, no tie. One and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and this is quite a um, quite a challenge, quite fun actually to always dampen the string directly on one and two, but only play on and with a ra with an upstroke. Um, this is this is a, a bit counter. Uh, uh, against the, the normal uh, or the, the natural feel. The natural feel to make it simple is just one, two, one, two. But don't play on, 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 on the one and two, but only on the end. It's, it's, uh, it's great. So one and two and one and two and one and two. And it's like a pendulum actually. One and two and one and two and one and two. You see? Okay, the next um, next thing on page eight, you see there are all these, these different rhythms from one to fifteen written all in the same same way, just using two two different symbols, eighth note rests and eighth notes. I'm sure that you can figure out this whole thing by yourself. Um, you can write all these these uh, these rhythms like this, but of course you 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 always where you don't play you have to to insert a rest so it's really silence. And um, if you don't want to have silence, you need other symbols. You need quarter notes or you need ties or a half note, um, whatever. So if I I play you all these these examples, maybe just for now, um, that you hear them. One, I say one or two, three to to name the example, and then you you can just hear it for yourself. So, one, two. You can try to practice this. It's a cool exercise. Okay, we come to our last page. It starts with um, rhythm number four, and we had rhythm, we had it already, but there's a, another way to notate it, and I wanted to to put it a little bit in the back now, because that's quite unusual to see a quarter note not on the one or two, but on the end of the end. In this case, on the end of the, the one. So the second example, um, you have a quarter note on the end of the one. But it's very, actually, it's very logic, you can say. If you compare it with a, with a first um, version of 
rhythm number four, you see that the, the one end and the two, these two eighth notes, they are tied together. And remember, two eighth notes, they just equal a quarter note. So let's go back to our, to our frame, to our framework, to our um, idea about um, dividing the space of, of one two four bar into four equal parts. You have one part, second part, third part, fourth part. On the first part, the first eighth note, you have an eighth note, you have sound. Then on the second part, you have an eighth note again, tied over to the third part, the eighth note. And then on the four, fourth part, you have an eighth note again. And this second part and the third part, because they are tied over, they have the same length, the same length of sound as a quarter note. So you can also write eighth note, quarter note, eighth note. And the sounds like like this. One and two and one and two and one and two and. So this quarter note starting at the one end has the same length as if we play quarter notes on one and two, like one, two, one, two. Also in this case, every quarter note equals two eighth notes. So this, I think this makes perfect sense. This is maybe just, just unusual to see. Oh, there's a quarter note. I have to play it on the beat, on the foot. No, that's not always the case. So you should be aware of this. As we go on on this uh, page, there's just one, one, one new symbol, one new concept, one new idea about uh, how to notate rhythms or note lengths. And this is a dot. You can put a dot behind every note, behind a quarter note. Later on, we, we also put it behind an eighth note. You can also put it behind, an, behind a half note. And we can also behind a rest. You can put an, a dot behind an eighth note rest or a quarter note rest. And what does it mean? There is one very clear definition of it. And Listen careful. <laughs> the dot behind a note makes the note longer by its half. So, and in our in our case, we have a quarter note and we have a dot. So this dot equals half of the length of the quarter note. So the dot equals an eighth note, because half of a quarter note is an eighth note. One quarter note equals two eighth notes. So this dot, meaning half of the quarter note, means one eighth note. Is this clear? So a quarter note with a dot equals a quarter note plus an eighth note. You can also say a, a dotted quarter note, that's the way to speak professional, a dotted quarter note equals three eighth notes. together, not played separately, of course. It's one long note. And this long note equals three eighth notes. So one quarter plus an eighth note. One quarter plus its half. An eighth note. So um, this is um, I think this is very clear 
if you always look at the second second example of rhythm number 9, 15, 13 and 7, um, always at the second example, there you, you, you don't use the symbol, but the first example equals the second. So, number 9, the second example is a quarter note tied over to an eighth note, and this eighth note is beamed with another eighth note. So it's played one and two and one and two and one and two and. So you see that the first note actually has a, a length of, of total three eighth notes sounding after each other together. One and two and then just comes one eighth note at the end. One and two and one and two and so one and two and one and two and two. So this rhythm is very frequently notated like the first example. A dotted quarter note and an eighth note. I hope this is this is clear. Otherwise Write, write, write it in the comments that you need an extra explanation or something and I will, I will think about how, how else I can explain it to you. Of course, there are different ways to, to explain it. I try to make it very clear, but maybe you got something wrong. So maybe repeat, a, repeat um, lessons four and five to really make sure that you, you understand it and listen to, to, to this lesson just again. Just a couple of times. I think it should, should clear up. Okay, 15. We have in the second example, we have a, a quarter note, an eighth note rest, and an eighth note. And the same thing what happens, what, 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 what can be done with a, with a note, to put a dot behind a note to make it longer. We can also put behind a rest. So a quarter note rest with a dot is a quarter note rest plus an eighth note rest. So we, so we do, we, we play it like one and two and one and two and. So we have on, on one, we have to stop the string from vibrating. One and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and. So you have a, a, a quarter note, a, a quarter quarter rest plus an eighth note rest, and you can write it. And it's mostly mostly written like this. Um, in the first example, you see it. You can write it as a, um, as a dotted quarter note rest, and then you have an um, eighth note at the end. Okay, number thirteen. You. You don't have any new symbols now. You're just uh, using the same same symbols, but in a different order. And I think this this should be very clear by now. You have an eighth note rest, and if you see in the the second example, you have an eighth note tied over to a quarter note. And this this thing we already had, this eighth note tied over to a quarter note equals a dotted quarter note. So you can write it. As, as written in the in the um, example in the first example of 13. So you have one and two and one and two. You dampen on one and play on and one and two and one and two. So you have a note which actually equals three eighth notes together. One long note starting on the one end and and and, and ringing keep ringing until the end of um, until the end of the, the bar, end of the measure. Okay, the last we have on page nine, on the last page of our file, of our PDF file is number seven. And this also brings us nothing really new. We have an eighth note and a dotted quarter note. And in the second example, it's the same written differently, so it's an eighth note with a beam to another eighth note, and then this second eighth note 
is tied over to a quarter note. So you also see this last note in the measure equals three eighths notes. One quarter note plus one eighth note or as the right uh, definition one quarter note plus its half. So you add the half of the note to make a dotted note. And it sounds like one and two and one and two and one and two. And the first and the second example of number seven, um, of rhythm number seven, sound alike. It's the same, the same thing, but just notated differently. And don't, don't worry, don't think too much about um, why it's so complicated, why they are having not a simple, simple way of this. With time, when we proceed with the whole thing, and um, in a future lesson you will get a lot of practical, um, practical um, material where you can really um, practice all this, the stuff we are talking now about, and to really internalize and and then more and more you will see that it, it really um, it's really useful it really uh, it's really like describing a musical event in a in a better more clear way to use either that notation or that notation maybe you get a, a, a glimpse of it and hopefully you understand everything and it was a very tough lesson i know for for most of you when you started with this, this stuff from 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 scratch from sorry from from zero i think uh, it was a lot of lot of stuff today so if you really get it if you really un understood it maybe after a couple of times um, watching this video i would be really happy and i think you you did a great great job Okay, if you like this lesson, please subscribe to my channel. There will be a, a, a new video uploaded every week. It will not always be beginners video. I will have a lot of advanced or intermediate stuff here also, but from time to time there will be um, a beginner video and we, we go on with the, the process of, 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 of learning here. But I think up until now you already have a lot of, of stuff to, to, to really practice. Um, if you like this, this lesson and you want to support me, me, my work, my channel, then you can also go to my website guitar-academia.com. There you find a, a button where you can donate. This would m make me very happy, of course, that you appreciate my work and that I can just go on making these videos for you. Okay, thanks for watching. My name is Hoop Hildenbrand.